and go back and revisit, but we was predestined to be here. And that has been in my head all week. Lord, we were predestined to be here. We can't see the designation. We start out one way, but we're going to end out a whole totally another way. Man, God is so good. Oh, he's good. Everybody bow your head. Let's go into prayer. Whew. Spirit of the living God, we thank you today. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. So on today, Father, I come humble today. Just open our heart today so we can receive whatever you have for us. That your word will not fall on stony ground, but on good soil on today. That the enemy would not snatch up this word. So we come against any distractions that keep people from hearing your word on today. And we decree and declare that lives will be changed and transformed by hearing the word of God. I pray right now you will open ears to be sensitive to what Holy Spirit is saying in this atmosphere this morning. Father, your word brings life and give it more abundantly. Holy Spirit, have your way. We move out our way. Have your way. I decrease as you increase in me. And Father, you will get the glory because it's all about you and none about us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. I just feel a worship. Come on, y'all get time to just, let's just throw our hands up right quick. Mm. Oh, Papas. Mm. Oh, Oh, See, sometimes that worship part, we try to move quick, but we fight in the spirit through our worship. Somebody this morning might need to look. <laughs> See, at work, I work in a medical field, dental field, whatever. It's a thing called e, uh, AED. Some, the AED is somebody passed out. You got to go get it to resuscitate them. So it gives you an extra boost. You got a pulse. It's there. But the e a the e a e d give you a little life. So if you don't mind this morning, come on, somebody might need a little extra umph to them. I feel we need a little extra shock. You got a pulse, but we need to speak a little bit more life into you this morning. The pulse is there, but the Holy Ghost fire gonna come on put a light to it this morning. Shanda de de ke ro ko shanda baba si ke ro ko shanda e ke ro ro ko shanda baba si ke ro ko shanda Hallelujah 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 ro baba baba si ke ro ro ko shanda e ke ro ro ko shanda baba si ke ro ro ko shanda e ke ro ro ko shanda baba baba si ke ro ro ko shanda e ke ro ro ko shanda Oh, Baba Basi, get on Koshanda. Eh, get on Koshande. Oh, Baba Basi, get on Koshande. Eh, get on Koshande. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just had that in my belly. Woo. The title of my message today is Taking Your Place in the Body of Christ. Those testimonies today. They really helped me out with this message, so I ain't even got to talk much. But taking your place in the body of Christ. Hebrews 10 and 25 says, let us not neglect our church meetings, as some people do. But we encourage, warn each other, especially now that the day is coming back again, is drawing near. I'm going to read that in the Amplified. It says, let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now. We can say especially now with everything going on. People running wild, acting crazy. Mental challenges on a high rise like it's never been before. But especially now. The day of his return is drawing near. And God wants everybody to be saved. But you know we got our will. 
Everybody is not going to accept Jesus Christ. But for the believers, it's different. In this verse, this verse is for the body of Christ. We are to encourage, strengthen each other in their faith, especially as Jesus return is closer and closer. As the body of Christ, we are need to step it up and take our place. When you part of an organization, you part of a particular group, most of these groups, they represent who they are. They don't water it down. They don't quiet it down. They come bold, right? Taking your place in the body of Christ. As we think about that, every organization, every group, they going to represent. What are we doing as the body of Christ to represent our position in the church? What are we doing outside at work in our family to represent who we are? First question, I got my message broken down in three different parts. And the first part is, what is, what is the body of Christ? When I think about what is the body of Christ, it is the worldwide body of born-again believers saved by the blood of Jesus and called out from the world. That means you've been set apart. That means I can't do what the world do. I can't say what the world say. I can't look like what the world is doing because I've been what? Set apart. They have been joined to Jesus Christ by Holy Spirit to fulfill the task of witnessing to and establishing the kingdom of God. So as body of Christ, we are to establish the kingdom of God. So just in case you want to water your purpose in life, there you go right there. You are part of the body of Christ, right? Everybody in the body of Christ. Even if you're not even a member here and you belong to another church, you still the body of Christ. So this is our goal. We to witness and establish the kingdom of God. And again, I think about all those little sororities, fraternities. They represent. I ain't even going to lie. They, they, they represent. But once you pay those fees and they get all involved, they have access to I guess different stuff they do. I don't know. I ain't never been a part of this stuff. But I do know they got fees, lots of fees. I don't know. Anybody in here know? Yeah, they got sponsor fees. All I know, once you pay these fees, then you got access to represent that particular group or sorority or sorority. But when you stop paying your fees, they kick you out. So your access is what? Okay, then. You don't want to call it today. So your access denied because you stopped paying your fees. But yet they will still represent. I'm AKA, I'm Delta, I'm this, I'm that. But yet they didn't stop paying them fees. So let's go back over here in the body of Christ. Jesus gave to the believer the authority of his name and the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no way that we should be weak. There's no way that we should allow things to happen if we have authority and power. Come on, say authority and power of the Holy Spirit. So that on his behalf, we may be involved in the establishment of the kingdom of God. There go there. The establishment of the kingdom of God. Here on earth, all disciples of Jesus, if you have confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I'm coming to tell you, yes, you are a disciple. Come on, tell yourself, I'm a disciple of Christ. Now, how many of y'all didn't know that? I'm glad, okay, everybody knew that. But sometimes we forget, we forget. So this lesson today going to help us remember who we are. Our loyalty as true disciples is first to Jesus Christ and his worldwide church, then to the local church where he has put us. That says a lot. He says where he has put us. That means before we join a church, we need to ask God where you are sending me to. 
We just don't wake up and say, I'm going to go to this church, join this church. Because God might not have sent you to the church, and you wonder why it ain't no working out for you. So this right here message tells us he put us where he want us to be. All the believers in God's worldwide church obviously cannot meet together. So God has ordained what we call the local church. It don't matter what denomination, but long as you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we are part of the body of Christ. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12, and we're going to start at verse 12. For as the body is one, has many parts, and all the many parts of that one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we are Jews or Gentiles, whether we are slaves or free. We have all been made to drink of one spirit. The body is not one part, but many, many parts. So that means I can't stand here without no feet. I'm going to need the feet to hold me up. You can't sit in that chair if the chair ain't got no legs. You're going to need the legs to hold you up. We all need each party in the body of Christ. Guess what? We need a Miss Sheila B over there. I can't do what Sheila do. I'm over there pretending in the air, but I can't do what she do. We need the where that bass guitar player at. I'm over there pretending like I can play, but I can't do what he do. I can't sing like Reva or Carmen. But guess what? We all the body of Christ. And everybody needed to work together because we got some stuff to do. Now, like I said before, if the sorority, sororities, whatever group you part of, if they can work together to get their agenda across, and them other letters, LBCTQ plus, 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 if they can work together and get their agenda across, the body of Christ got to do what? Come together. And we need everybody. Come on, tell your neighbor, we need you. Now tell the other neighbor, God needs you. Because guess what? It will kind of sound kind of funny if I come over and try to play she little thing. It ain't going to sound right. <laughs> if I go try to play the drums like Miss Kia, it ain't going to sound right. But we thank God for Miss Sheila and Miss Kia. We thank God for Deacon David because I can't do offering like Deacon David. Y'all know Pastor asked me to do offering. Guess what? He got the oil to do it. So I'm going to stay over here in my lane. Now, what he need me to do, I'm going to do it. If you need to be a greeter, guess what? That's your lane. But everything worked together. What if you just came in here? You didn't have a greeter. You didn't have nobody on the drums, nobody on the keys. We all working together. And we are to establish the kingdom of God. All right. Hallelujah. Come on. That's your glory. I ain't know how God was going to put this together, but you know what? He is a great God. Let him use me. Hallelujah. Come on, let's see what God's word says about the body of Christ. I got maybe three to four points. One, all members have the same love and care for each other. It ain't I don't love them because they so-and-so niece or auntie. Or I don't like where they grew up at because we grew up in another neighborhood. No, it says all members should have the same love and care for each other. First Corinthians 12 and 25. I don't pick and choose who I want to love because they're not part of my church. We should have the same love and care because we are the body of Christ. We was out yesterday eating breakfast. It never fails. Me and my husband end up meeting people. <laughs> Just meet people. Don't know them. Strangers. Hey, y'all want to sit with us? Of course, we'll eat with y'all. Don't know. Just start eating breakfast with them. So we talking. I said, uh, baby, go on pray over breakfast since you talking. Y'all know my husband just be talking, just be talking. So I said, you just go on and pray over the breakfast then. So soon he prayed, the young man said, it was another husband and wife. They probably in their late 30s, early 40s. Anyway, they said, when he got through praying, hold on, are y'all clergy? 
<laughs> say clergy? Why you say that? No, nah, that one them, that one them pastors' prayers right there. I say no. Nah. Come on, what y'all do at the church? I said, what y'all do at the church? And we began to share with them what we do. We said we knew it. Y'all just smelt like them church people. I said, what you do at church? I'm a music minister. Now, they checking us, but they do something in the church, too. But it's just the love we had, and we had just met those people. But because we are the body of Christ, come on, God brought us together the, yesterday. We didn't have to know them, but at that table, meeting and eating with these people, hey, we became friends. We became family. And when we, when we left, we were like, love y'all. See, I can't wait till the next time we eat again. The body of Christ on display at the Cracker Barrel. Number two, all members suffer and rejoice together. The body of Christ, we rejoice together. We celebrate each other. Come on, I got so excited when testimony service go on because I'm like, Lord, you did it for them. Yeah. Woo, and like Minister Keisha said, he in my neighborhood. If you're doing it for my sister, you're doing it for my brother, that means you in my neighborhood. So we rejoice with other sisters and brothers. Come on, you rejoice when that lady said, I got a debt-free car. And I get, rejoice when my brother said he got a debt-free truck. Because you know why? I got tired of him and his wife running, and she got to pick him up. She got to go get the kids. Chris, ain't you happy? I'm happy for my sister that her husband was blessed with a debt-free truck. Come on, we rejoice together. And when we hurt, we hurt together. When somebody hurt my, I can't see my sister hurting and crying. I'm going to go talk to her. Baby, what's wrong? What can we do? But we don't want you crying. Come on. You, you cry, but y'all know me. Come on, put your big girl drawers back on. Come on. Get back in the race. Because we need you to stay focused on what God got for you. See, the devil have you all over there in that pity party. I'm going to tell you now, I don't do pity parties long. I might give you 10 seconds, 10 at the most. But you better get that word and you better start applying it to it. Because all I know, the word is there to bring you life. Like that EAD I told you at work, when you got a little pulse, they put it on you, going to give you some more life. Well, I'm telling you, I'm that AED, I'm going to give you that. I ain't got time for this. Okay, come on now. But we love you. We love you. But if we let you sit and soak in your pity, they give the room for the enemy to come in and bring condemnation. Bring guilt and unforgiveness. So that's why you got to get back up, okay? But we love you because we are the body of Christ. The next thing, all members are united through the blood of Christ. You are an heir. You are an heir of God and a joint heir of Christ. What's an heir? Someone who's legally entitled to inherit assets. You are inherited. It's your legal right to have every promise that God said you can have that's in this book right here. If you don't know the promises, Google it. But if you're a member here at Faith in the National, we got something called the 40 I Am's. You better look and see what are the promises of God for me in my life. Because you are a joint heir with Jesus. You ain't supposed to be with doing without and depressed and everything going on. Yeah, we gonna, it ain't easy. But guess what? You can look because your joy is coming. When you know the promise and you stand on the word like the song said, what the song say? Standing on the word of God, the promises of God. Because Christ is our Savior. So you're never defeated because you are an heir. Come on, say you're an heir. So you got to know it and feel it. I'm an heir. Now, when you ask me, I tell somebody I'm God's favorite daughter. That's right. See, when you start acting like this, you're going to feel like every day your birthday. You know, I like that. Every day my birthday. Because I spend time with him. And when you spend time with him, you can... Feel like you your favorite. I know God ain't got no he ain't got no favorites. But when I spend more time with him, it's an intimate relationship where it's just me and him and nobody else. Where I feel it's 
arms around me. Let me know it's okay, daughter. You got the grace to keep going. So when you have that intimate relationship, I'm coming to tell you today, you can be his favorite daughter. You can be his favorite son. If you just spend time in that secret place where it's just you and him, come on. Close your eyes right there and just love on your daddy. Just, Lord, breathe on them right now. I ask God to breathe on each and every person in this building where he, where they know they are loved regardless of what the enemy is trying to tell them, Lord. Oh, Baba, seek it little Kushani. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your love. Mm. Oh, the next point is what God's word says about the body of Christ. We're going to go to Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. This is what he's given us, starting at verse 11. Ephesians 4, verse 11. And it says, he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the equipping of the what saints now you are a saint just in case everybody don't know you are the saint say, say come on i am a saint for the work of the service and for the building up of the body of christ and it goes back to every member everything has to function in order to be working together for the establishment of the kingdom we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God into a complete man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So you come to be a body of Christ. He's given us these people to speak in our lives. Like I was talking about my pastor early. I thank God for our pastor. He has spoke things in our life, helped build us up. Now we are equipped to do the work of the ministry when he's not here church is still going on if he didn't take time to pour in us correct us and teach us sometimes he function teach apostle evangelist and apostle he function in all of them sometimes everybody know right so he really just equipping us because church still got to go on when he's not here now, that'll be a selfish pastor if he don't equip nobody. Then when he go on the church closed down, that ain't building up the body of Christ. Then we all out of will. Then we like children, what? Toss through and fro. Ain't got no home, ain't got no shepherd, ain't got nobody. We just act her acting a fool like some renegades. But to God be the glory. We got a pastor and Anthony and a net king. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on. Got the honor of man of God. Even he's not here, you still send him a love offering just because why? He entrusted me to come in, so we need to thank him for that. We still going to love on him. Amen. God's word in the Bible about the body of Christ. Unity is an absolute need. We got to have unity to maintain the health of the body. That's just like your physical body. You got to have, you got to eat. You got to eat, right? You got to exercise. You got to drink water. And you got to feed your spirit, man. Not just the flesh. But if you feed one more than the other one, somebody's going to overpower one of them. Unity. Unity. On the physical and on the spiritual. When we come in here, it should be a unity of praise. A unity of worship. So when we do that, it reaches the heaven. Then you feel the glory of God rest on each and every person. And guess what? The 24 elders in heaven rejoicing and bowing down saying, holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Now I'm on the part two of my message. What is the church? But we know we can say first what the church is not. The church is not names of people on a local church roll or record. See, me, I used to be honest. I ain't like church people, period. Well, I had to have a renewed mind. I was relating church people to the church. 
So I had to have a renewed mind in Christ to understand that because some church people weren't living as believers, didn't have nothing to do with what God had put and ordained in the earth. It's the church to establish his kingdom. But because it's so many people have destroyed and watered down what the church is supposed to be, you had affected me, and I didn't even know I was crazy. But that's why God looking for some uncompromising. Like this baby said, I was uncompromising. I don't care if I'm not serving, I'm coming to church. What I look like telling the pastor, pastor, I thought you said I had nine weeks off. I ain't been ministering today. I would be crazy. <laughs> that been a set me back 10 years and I can't afford to sit back. Because obedience is better than what? So when he said you minister, stunning, yes, sir, yes, and amen, to God be the glory. Amen. Stomach hurting, it's been hurting, been hurting since Tuesday, but that's okay. But I'm flowing in obedience to my man of God. And I ask God to feel me what you want to say. I don't know how to do it. I can't preach like Pastor King. But I just want to be used by you because I'm a willing vessel. And I'm going to establish your word as long as you give me breath here in this earth, Lord. Because when you think about, whoo, 10 years ago, it wouldn't be no Minister Tiffany. 15 years ago, it wouldn't be no Minister Tiffany. But when I came and hooked up with my husband, Marcus Owens, he brought me to faith in that. Then I hooked up to a man and woman of God that poured in me, invested in me. So when I think about a text saying you got the minister, even though you're supposed to be nine weeks sitting down, is yes and amen. I'm like the Apostle Paul. I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I ain't been to no Bible school. I ain't been to no other school. I've been in the dental field for over 50, 20, I lost count, 20 some years. I ain't got no, what you call it? Thank you, thank you. I ain't got no BS, I ain't got no masters. But I know I got an HS and that's Holy Spirit. I know the Father, J-E-S-U-S. Baby, I just know God the Father, that what he done for me. So even though I ain't got a master's, a bachelor's, I've been working over 24 years in a field where I should probably have a degree. But my daddy God seen fit. I'm going to use you because you're a willing vessel. And I owe God everything. I'm a prisoner for Jesus Christ. So when a Minister Keisha texted me last night, I need you to pray midnight. I was up, stomach hurting. I'm like, girl, I'm still trying to go over this lesson. I, God talked to me because I'm having a problem with this lesson. I said, yes, ma'am, because I'm a willing vessel. And I'm not finna play with God because he said we've been set apart. If I'm playing with God and every time I got to go back and forth with my leaders, I, I'm acting like the world. But because I'm part of the body of Christ and I accepted Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I've been set apart. Okay? What the word, the church is not? A social club. People join certain churches because it's a social acceptable. Oh, girl, you know I go to that big church named Bellevue Baptist with the crosses. You know, stuff like that. It's not a social club. And this is my favorite. It is not organized where Christians floating around, not related or committed to any local church. Christians say they are born again and profess Christ but they seek no reason to join a local church or to be committed there. Jesus does not want his disciples to be spiritual grasshoppers jumping from church to church. No one who is saved should be without a spiritual home, especially we talking about you being part of the body of Christ. We talking about taking your place in the body of Christ this morning. So you can't say, I belong to Deacon Sheets and Minister Pillowcase pillow, pillow and stuff. I do 
bedside Baptist. But I'm a born again, but I believe Jesus saved me. Now, God is good. Girl, where you go to church? Girl, I just do church at home. I do online. You didn't watch 15 pastors online, but you ain't sold a seed to one of them. But you part of the body of Christ. I'm just talking about what God like. If we're going to be the party of Christ, what are we to do? Establish the kingdom of God. And if we get about God's business, like all them other letters and all them other people, ain't no way in the world we should have children out here running crazy. Ain't no way in the world all the crime and violence. You know why? We ain't pushing our agenda as believers. We got to get involved. We can't keep coming to church like bench members. We look and we at this church this Sunday. We at another church next Sunday. No, I'm just going to stay at home and watch 15 churches online throughout the week. And you ain't helping nowhere. You ain't help building and establishing God's kingdom. You are a child of God. You say it every day. What am I doing for his kingdom? What can I do for God and all he has done for me? We are to establish his kingdom, inviting people to church, telling God, people about God's goodness. Tell them your testimony if you don't tell them nothing else. So I encourage you today, if you're not belonging to a church home, get you a spiritual leader. You don't look for the church. You look, ask God to send you a shepherd over your soul that's going to pray for you, that's going to love on you, and going to teach you and correct you so you can know who you are in Christ and how to build up his kingdom. Praise and worship is important when you come to the house. We love praise and worship. But if these people went obedient to God's voice and want to help his kingdom, we wouldn't have a praise team. If we didn't have the parking lot attendees out there making sure your car is parked, we wouldn't have it because they'll be too selfish at home. So see where you fit in during this lesson today. See where can I fit in because God want to do greater for you. He wants you to receive the promises he has for you. The church is the body of Christ in the earth, and he deserves and he desires to continue his life and ministry through this body, that the will of God may be done in earth. He needs your body. Come on, tell yourself, he needs my body. When we let go of our will and take his will and get out the way and let him drive, we won't have no problem to walk into his will. The church is Holy Spirit-filled people who are sold out for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul, I always refer back to him starting in Acts 9. Apostle Paul, to me, was the greatest disciple. He didn't grow up in church. Matter of fact, he more like me. I just didn't kill him physically, but I killed him with my mouth. You're talking about church people. But God said you fit to use him. The church is Holy Spirit people who are sold out for the kingdom of God. They daily walk in the anointing of God. They heal the sick, feed the hungry. They witness to win the loss. They do the works of Jesus Christ. Number three, the church is born again, spirit-filled Christians who are responsible church members. That means you show up on time. That means when you're not here, let somebody know. Because I'm responsible church member, which we don't like to say church member. We like to say disciples. You're a disciple of Christ. And when you become a di disciple of Christ, you have responsibilities. Hallelujah. Every individual who is born again in every denomination belongs to Jesus. Every person who has trusted in Jesus as their Savior and Lord is blood brought, blood washed, born again believer, and a member of somebody's local church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But sometimes it's hard for us to accept where do we fit in because we sometimes let the enemy come in and play with our mind and lie to us. But just know you still worthy. You look at the life of Apostle Paul, how he had that encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. He didn't feel like he was worthy. But God sent him to the body of Christ to help build him up. 
when he get to the body of Christ, which is Ananias, sent him to help build him up. Ananias thought God was crazy. You want me to do what? Do you know what he done did? Like, God don't know what he did. But one thing I like about God. Woo, come on, y'all. Let's turn to Acts, um, Acts chapter 9. One thing I like about God, he choose you. You don't choose him. So he had to tell that church member, the one I said, I ain't like church people. And Ananias was almost like that to me. You going to tell God. So Acts chapter 9. And we're going to start at verse 13. And this is after the Lord has spoke to Saul and we, with Paul, a.k.a. Saul. You know, this is alias Saul. But when God saved him, he had an encounter. God changed his name. So starting at verse 13, it says, And I answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how many evil things he have done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But, Lord, you, you, you want him to come to me? But the Lord said to him, you go, go your way, for this man is a what? Chosen vessel of mine. I come to tell you God chose you today. Like I passed a preach a couple of weeks ago. It don't matter about your designation. It don't matter how you begin. It's how you end this race. You are chosen. So tell yourself today, I'm chosen. God need me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our real attitude to Christ Jesus is seen by our attitude to his body, the church. A life of service for God is the most fulfilling life there is because we are created by God to serve him. I heard somebody say, I think it was Deacon David, do we give our jobs more dedication? Do we give God? Do we give our God jobs more dedication than we give our church? If we can be on time for our jobs, can we be on time for God's house? Just in case they need somebody to go get some ice. Just in case they need some breakdown, maybe I can fix it. But can we give our dedication to our local church? And again, our real attitude to Christ is seen by our attitude to his body. And his body is the church. We need to ask ourselves these questions. What can I put into the body? And not always ask, what can I get out this body? So we come asking, but how many times do we say, what can I do? And we talk about building the body of Christ. We need to give unselfishly of ourselves. Those who put in the most get the most out of this commitment. It's just like the people testifying. See, these people just ain't showing up on Sunday and Wednesday, and you hear these testimonies. These people coming every time we said we got this going on, every time we got prayer, every time we got something, they showing up. Now they can partake in the blessings of what God had for them because they connected to the body of Christ. And I can guarantee each one of us, you will have a testimony after testimony here because you came to the church and got connected to the body of Christ. So when you weak, your sisters and brothers gather around you, pray and lift you up when you feel a little down. So when I don't feel like coming, somebody going to call and text you, girl, look, it's a good word coming on. It might help you today. So here we are building up the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Going back to Paul, he was a chosen vessel of God. And the reason why sometimes we don't feel like we're chosen, like I said, because you feel like you are unworthy. But when you became a disciple for Christ, you had all access granted. You ain't got to pay no dues. All you got to do is be involved. You have access grants. 
to be part of the body of Christ. That means I got to start looking different, saying different, and becoming who God called me to be. In 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, but you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people but are now the people of God. Hallelujah. Who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. So when you just get at your head and know that you are valuable to the body of Christ, know who you are. You are valuable. You are valuable knowing who you are. God didn't send his son Jesus for nothing. Yeah, we mess up, we fall down. But you are valuable to the kingdom of God. The devil come to deceive you and trick you, thinking your past have messed you up. I was messed up because the devil had me thinking, you done had a couple of abortions. God don't bless you like that. The devil had me thinking because I was used to sleeping with married men. God can't use you. How God going to bless you with a husband? The devil had me confused. And I come to set you free on the day. Because the devil have you thinking it's nothing for me to do in his, this church world. I just told you earlier, everybody is needed. Every function is needed. You are valuable to God because if you want, you wouldn't be sitting in this place today. We got testimony after testimony because we all used to be some ex something. But guess what? He used Paul. He changed his name. He can use Brother David. He was a whoremonger. He used Tiffany. I was a drunk and everything else. I get too far. My husband, he used us. But you are valuable. So I got an example today. Come on, tell yourself you valuable. Sometimes you need to hear it. Say, I'm valuable to God. I'm valuable to the body of Christ. And it don't matter how old I am, how young I am. It don't matter how shape I came in. God going to use you to build his kingdom. One thing about value, you don't lose your value. Once God come into your life, you've been washed, you've been cleansed. He don't remember your sins. So quit letting other people and quit letting the devil tell you who you are and what you used to be. Can't nobody tell me about Tiffany because I don't know that old Tiffany no more. So when you come for me, you better come correct. I've been saved, set free, and I'm delivered. I'm walking in a new life. Come on. So this 20 still got back. I don't care how much I ball up this 20. It's still a what? A $20 bill. Even in the dirt. When you get through stepping on it, putting it in dirt. If I get somebody, who wants this 20? I'm going to step on it. I'm going to even tear it a little bit. Now, who still wants this 20? Because it's still a $20 bill. Now, when I put it in the water and wash all the dirt and all that stuff off, it's dry. Is it still not a valuable 20? You think you can still go to the store and spend it? Once God, after you come out the dirt, after he cleaned you up, after you having an encounter with his son, he come wash you off, clean you up, slap you a couple of times, put you some new clothes on. He dried you up. He loose you from all that bondage you came in with. He broke the chains off you that didn't had you confused and depressed. He said, baby girl, son, you still valuable to me. So when you come to the body of Christ and he builds you back up, you get around sisters and brothers in the ministry and say, girl, brother, you ain't got to go through that by yourself. 
Then you get your strength and you get you some energy. Now here you is. You being built up now. Because I'm with the body of Christ. We talking about taking your place. So when you start in the body of Christ, you, you washed up, I'm cleansed. Lord, I'm not walking in condemnation. I forgive others and I forgive myself. So I'm ready to go forth and be like the apostle Paul. I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. What can I do for you, my Savior? What can I do for you, Lord, on this day? He getting you around because I'm about to add value to you. I'm adding your value. Now with another 20 on the 20, that becomes 40. So I came in just single. But when God got through restoring me and cleaning me up and made me look a little different, he removed all the stains off me. He added value to me. Now I got a little bit more. Now I can go grab somebody. Now I'm adding to the body of Christ. Because I didn't grab my sister now. Because I've been built up by the faith family and faith international. Now I can come witness to her. Now she going to grab her. This her co-worker. She going to grab her. Now we about to build up this body. Now we going to go grab this sister. Come on, because she got what we need. Because I've been built up and I've been changed. And now my whole purpose is to say establish the kingdom of God. So here we are today. I come to tell you, you're valuable. You're valuable to the kingdom of God. You are valuable, so quit letting the devil paralyze your legs. You can't move. You can't stand. But if you know who you are, and I come to tell you, you are redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You are the light of the world. Regardless of how you feel, you the light. Regardless of what you done did, guess what? I'm still an heir with God and a joint heir with Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank y'all, lady. Come on, every head bow. Thank God today for the word. You are valuable. You are valuable to the kingdom of God. As you leave here today. Come worship with us every Sunday at 1130 a.m. Prayer, praise, and worship. Every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m., come attend our Bible study and bring the children. We have a strong children's and teen ministry. 1405 Madison, West Memphis, Arkansas. All are welcome. Pastor Anthony and First Lady Annette King invite you to come and attend Faith International Ministries. The City Church. We take time for the supernatural wind. Blow over us.